all welcome back. And thanks for tuning back in. If we didn't lose you after the last one. Yeah, stay away, uh, guys. Stay so th- th- I think this one's going to be a little bit more exciting maybe for some. Um, so we're just going to kind of kick it off starting uh, by talking about our five most anticipated movies coming out this year. Um, there will probably be some overlap between our lists, so... I didn't put mine in any sort of order, so right, yeah. if if we happen to have some bleed over, we'll just you know if if I name it before Josh and yeah, I'm and not gonna go like over list, We'll just say this yeah. this was on my list and move on to the next. So. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Um, so I'll, I'll I guess I'll start things off. Yeah, okay. Um, so I know this is one that's definitely on both of our lists, but <laughs> the Batman. Oh. Um, my. when I heard that. Robert Pattinson was playing Batman. I think, like most people, I was like, oh, dude, yeah. of all the people that you could have chose. Although, I have grown to like him as an actor over the years, especially a lot of his more recent um, jobs that he's done. Um, you know, I, I actually think he's one of the best actual actors there are from an actual profession and technical standpoint. Um, See, like with me, with him, um, I haven't really been exposed to much other than like his mainstream stuff. Right. So like you're talking like Twilight, you know. Right. And that's not not necessarily my thing. Like he, I respect it. He started it, but... to take a turn for me. He was in a movie called The Rover with Guy Pierce. It was like an Australian movie. Ooh. It was kind of like post-apocalyptic. Um, and that was after all the Twilight stuff. And I'm sure he probably did something else after that that I'm unaware of. But that was kind of like his first uh, serious role, if you will. Hmm. I, I need to. If I'm, I'm just pulling this from memory, but I want to say it was like 2011 ish that that movie came out. I need to explore um, more Robert Patterson film. But yeah, he was he was awesome in Tenant, um, the Christopher Nolan movie. Uh, he was, you know, uh, there's several other movies I could name. Um, yeah, Afterlife was another really good one with him. Right. It was a space kind of obscure movie, uh, art house film, really crazy, kind of like the. Uh, basically the premise of that was that they were traveling to reseed population elsewhere. Earth was doomed, that sort of thing. But they like loaded all these various ships. The ship that they were on was like all these troubled behavioral health issued kids, but they'd had like one scientist on there Mm. and like just wild, like buffoonery was going on and just uh, like, you know, like, uh, people were getting raped and (laughs) so i mean it was it was kind of dark and there was a an allusion to there was like a dark force on the ship that was kind of commandeering over people as well so like influencing yeah like kind of like a deep space madness sort of thing kind of like event horizon ish in that regard so but anyway uh the batman back to that matt reeves is an excellent director um he did the let the right one uh remake uh let me in he did Cloverfield. He did all well. He did, with the exception of the first uh, Planet of the Apes, the newer franchise. He did the uh, the last two in the installments. Um, the man, he really has an, a stellar track record as a director now. Um, but so we talked about Pattinson and Matt Reeves being involved in it. But Paul Dano, again, one of the best actors. His role in There Will Be Blood um, was just incredible. Uh, I'm pretty sure he directed or was involved in that Swiss Army Man movie. Oh, with I think. Uh, Daniel Radcliffe? Yeah. Yeah, that was a fantastic That was excellent. Um, Andy Hall from Manchester Orchestra did the soundtrack for that movie. I did not even know yeah. that. Yeah, and um, so Paul Dano's in this. Jeffrey Wright, one of my favorite actors, criminally underrated. Uh, Westworld, Boardwalk Empire. Oh, I mean, dude. just incredible. Westworld incredible yeah. actor he was fantastic in um this world. he's he's the gordon mm-hmm. um and then andy circus is playing alfred and he's one of my favorite actors as well typically does the mocap type uh action type stuff you know he's uh garland and uh <laughs> garland. and uh was Caesar. <laughs> and uh snoke yeah as well. supreme leader snoke yeah, yeah. so and then um Colin Farrell is the penguin who's completely unrecognizable. Yeah, like, I had to, like, find stills yeah. and research Colin Farrell's character, like, as much as I could, because I was not sold that that was Colin Farrell yeah. <laughs> through the trailers and clips that I had seen. And how could you forget the lovely Zoe Kravitz oh, as Catwoman? Yeah. Like, this is my favorite Catwoman casting probably since, like, Eartha Kit, without yeah. question. As yeah, far like, as uh, 
And I love Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman, let me say that also. It was just a different take, and it was fine for what it was. It was more of a campy presentation, but still dark. Right. Um, I love Batman Returns. I think Michael Keaton as Batman is extremely underrated. He's not done. Um, and he's not done, that's right. He's going to be in Flashpoint. Yep, so, yep. Um, so anything else you want to add to the Batman love fest? Oh, Josh? man, just... Uh... I just like, you know, like, it feels like the tone's going to be really good. It seems like a more younger, real, vengeful Batman. Yeah. And not so much as, like, this rich, he- like, vigilante hero. It seems right. like it's a more authentic character. Yeah. And um, the whole aspect with the Riddler and, you know, or Edward Nigma, like, uh, the guy that's playing him. What's his name? Paul Dano. Yeah. Like, yeah. is a fantastic actor. Right. And everything I've seen so far, as far as, like, clips and trailers... I, I think it's going to be a fantastic film. It's got more of a horror approach. And mm-hmm. They they did talk about the fact that it's like a way more serious tone. I guess is what I'm trying to say. And um, it's got. I think that I read that Matt Reeves' big influences were Nirvana, uh, '70s and '80s cinema and crime. Perfect. And Perfect. so, and I think the premises is, is kind of like year two Batman. They're not doing any origin story at all because it's been played out. Right. They did say. They did the same thing with this newer Spider-Man universe. Right. Which I am absolutely fine with. They're assuming everybody's coming in the end of this as a Batman fan, knows who he is. Let's get, let's just go balls to the wall out the gate. Right, right. Let's introduce to the players. Let's, yeah. I'm, I'm all for it, dude. I'm excited. Uh, Josh, what's your, what's one that you have on your list? Well, to play into the Spider-Man, um, I think I'm going to add Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Right. The new one that's going to come out, the, yeah. the animated film i think that's going to be fantastic um it's going to be featuring oscar isaac uh if i get like really bad with these names guys i apologize like i'm really bad but anyway jake johnson um he's been in i don't know if you watch this but new girl you, yeah he he, uh, yeah. he was in the original yeah into the spider verse he he's played in one safety of the not guaranteed he's in uh, yeah. the new jurassic world movies yeah, and uh, I'm so I'm really excited for that. And, you know, from what I've read, it's just going to be a continuation or progression of Miles as Spider-Man, which I'd like to see play out because I really enjoy Miles, Miles Morales as Spider-Man. Yeah. So I'm, I'm excited to see that all come back. Um, it really te- It's going to release around October 7th, I think. But also what was cool that I found when I was researching this was they're going to add some new art styles. So, like, yeah. it's not going to be... They did that in the last film. There was multiple kinds of styles, but they they stuck to a general, you know what I'm saying, like a general style to get you through the entire film. But then certain action scenes and stuff, they added certain things. This is going to encompass multiple different art styles throughout the entire film, from what I've read. It's going to incorporate a lot of different effects um, companies and stuff. So I'm really excited to see how pretty they make it and how so far I they dive the, into it. I think the game plan is that um, every universe that they travel to is going to have its own art aesthetic. Is what I got they're you. doing. That um, would make sense. And there's a guy, shout out to Boss Logic on social media, follow him. He he just had a meeting with Sony. Ooh. And he does his own graphic design stuff and he does amazing Spider Man stuff. I guarantee you that they we'll see him. they they have used they're gonna use him for one of those universes. Yeah. And it is his work is incredible. You have to check him out. Like I like following good art. I'm like literally getting goosebumps just telling you about him right now. His <laughs> artwork is that good. Yeah. Boss Logic, check him out. I have to check him out and follow him. But um, yeah, yeah, that film, I am, um, you know, it's just like, it's one of them wholesome good family movies that I can enjoy with the whole family. And you know what I mean? And like, right. my kids will enjoy it. I'll enjoy it. We Doesn't can discuss insult it. your intelligence right, as an adult right. to go watch and you don't exactly. feel dumber for having an event right. so, <laughs> attended. Yeah, yeah I'm, in, I'm pumped for that one. That one's definitely on my list. Um, the next one I've got on my list is Nope. Um, it's forecasted to come out July 22nd, but it's Jordan Peele's next original movie. Jordan Peele, I've like my top three directors in the game right now, like newer directors, if you will, is, you know, Ari Aster, um, is, uh, Robert Eggers and, and Jordan Peele. Uh, Get Out is arguably the best movie that's come out in the last 20 years. Uh, it's incredible. Uh, Us is great. Uh, Another incredible release by him. So the guy can do no wrong. And who would have thought, you know, Jordan Peele of Key Appeal of uh, Mad TV back in the day had this in him. (laughs) It is insane. Um, uh, Daniel Kaluuya is coming back. He was in Get Out. He's in Black Panther. He was in uh, Judas and the Black Messiah. Um Kiki Palmer, and then uh, Stephen Wynn, um, Stephen Wynn of Walking Dead fame, 
uh, was Glenn on Walking Dead. Okay. Uh, is actually coming back for this, and I believe he might have been in that searching movie <coughs> as well as Excuse Minori. Um, but yeah, Stephen Wynn is going to be in this, and a lot not a lot of details are um, have been released about it. The they actually released the movie poster, which seems wild. I just it's it's ambiguously been labeled as a sci-fi horror thriller, which that's what all of those movies have been. Right. Um, and the poster is really kind of funny. It's like a, a hillside town, like a small town with a huge, like fakeish looking storm cloud over it. Just like, like <laughs> lightning bolts shooting down on the town. <laughs> so it's like a so, very like picturesque. Horror, yeah. I'm like, type I'm, feel. I'm wondering where the hell this is going. Like my, I, I don't know. It just seems like weird artwork for a movie. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But again, the guy can do no wrong. I'm sure it's going to be great. So that's, that's the next one on my list. What about you, Josh? What you got? Oh, I'm going to go with Jackass Forever, which is supposed to be coming out February 4th. Um, For me, you know, that just ties back into like high school days and pre-high school days. But um, so much more than that for me, like I've really been following the guys with their like uh, past to sobriety and stuff like on social media and Twitter. And so it's it's cool to see them still. Well, I mean, I don't know if it's cool to see them act like idiots, but it's cool to see them still trying to do what they've always done, but do it in a more, you know what I mean? Like in, in a sober aspect of it, you know what I mean? It's, it's cool to see them. Uh, what they do is creative, whether you agree or not, it is creative. So it's cool to see them with like on their journey to sobriety, but still try to do the crazy stuff that they do being right. sober. You know what I mean? Um, also with that, I've been kind of following, um, Bam will not, Bam Margera will not be included in this film. Yeah. They, they had issues with him right out the gate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like apparently, I mean, I don't know if you and remember. Actually it was in part why it got delayed because it was supposed to come out last year because they had a, they had a, a court proceeding over it. Yeah. Jeff Tremaine and, um, MTV, I guess had a big deal with, um, Bam because he was upset about him not being included in the film. But you know, Bam is still having issues with sobriety himself. I mean, I don't know if it's been, what, a year now. He got kicked off of that flight for drinking, you know, and they tried. Apparently the cast, a lot of cast members had tried to uh, have a, what do you call, a intervention for him. Yeah, and it he didn't was, go well. It didn't go well, right, yeah. yeah. So it'll be interesting to see, like, a couple of the new cast members that they've added and not have that dynamic of Bam in there with them, you know what I mean? So I'm just kind of interested to see what kind of crazy and wild stuff they do and who all they added to it. Um, yeah, and like I said, that comes out February 4th, so that ought to be a good time. Don't take your kids to see that one, though, obviously, if you've seen right. any other films. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> That one's right. not going to be a family-friendly yeah. film. Like, uh, their dicks out constantly and shitting and what have yeah, you. Yeah, and I hope they get away from that. Like, like I said, like... Uh, man, take the girl that brought you to the dance and, <laughs> and get on the floor and just cut one loose, man. I, I've seen I, some... I don't know. I don't I, know why I'm I've seen all the movies. It. I watched the show back in the day. It's just good for mindless, right, stupid, right. sophomore, right. juvenile, really. I guess it, just because I've been so uh, involved with it yeah. throughout my and now they're like, teenage years you know, and they're all old. And <laughs> all 50-ish. Yeah. It's just, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. So uh, The next one I have on my list is Thor, Love and Thunder. So uh, that's the new Thor movie. Yeah. Um, Taika Watiti uh, is directing it, which I love everything he does. I think uh, a, a big movie that a lot of people haven't seen that they should definitely check out if they haven't is Boy um, that he did. Uh, that movie has a ton of heart. It's, it's set in New Zealand about a boy who's obsessed with Michael Jackson and the community um, has a, a support around him and his obsession with Michael Jackson. Um, it's it's a really good movie. He's done Hunt for Wilder People. He did the last Thor movie. He did um, uh, Jojo Rabbit. That was him as well. Oh wow, yeah. He's an incredible director. Um, but you know, and and he also does the rock, I forget the rock guy's voice in the last Thor movie, but he'll be back again. Korg, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he he does Korg's voice as well beyond directing the film. But there's rumors that the Guardians of the Galaxy will be involved in this oh, as wow. well. I'm going to see that. Um, so, but what we know for sure of the cast is Natalie Portman's back, and there's speculation that they're going to um, go into the Thor storyline from the comics where uh, Jane becomes Thor, takes the Thor mantle over. Um, we'll see if that happens. I'm pretty confident they're kind of like building openly, up to that. Openly talking about that happening. Yeah. Um, 
of course, you know, Chris Hemsworth is back as Thor. Uh, but the big ticket here to me, in my opinion, is Christian Bale is the villain in this. Oh, wow. Yes. Hmm. So uh, and, he, and he's the butcher. So he and it is a wild villain. If you if you haven't checked it out, um, the comic renderings of what what this guy looks like. I'm be curious how they bring him to the to the cinema to the film. Because uh, you think Christian Bale, one of the biggest actors, and one of the, you know, and, one of the biggest method actors. Too. Yes, yeah, yeah, in many respects, completely involved in his roles. So he, it's going to be interesting seeing him do this as well. In my opinion, um, he gets to play a villain, and I, I don't know that he really has gotten that opportunity um, since American Psycho. But I'm sure I'm forgetting something along the way. So it'll be good to see him as a villain. Um, what you got next on your list, Josh? Well, to keep it family friendly for you guys, um, <laughs> I've actually got another animated movie that's coming up this year that I'm oh, so excited for. Um, Lightyear with Chris Evans is Buzz Lightyear. Yeah, it's the origin story of Buzz Lightyear. Um, Taki Awatiti's in that. Too, yep, right? he will be in that. Um, Pixar, of course, Pixar animation is a classic. They've always been a classic as far as animation. The Toy Story. Films are so good and wholesome. I, kind of, I felt like they kind of fell off there for a little bit. Like, the first couple of films were really good. Um, the third one was okay. But, um, I don't know. Like, uh, when I was a kid and Toy Story come out, Buzz Lightyear was my favorite character. You know, kudos to Tim Allen for making that character what he is. But it'll be interesting to see Chris Evans. Chris Evans. T- or, is it Evans? Yeah, Chris yeah. Evans. Yeah, it's Chris Evans. Yeah. yeah. Chris Evans uh, play the role of Buzz Lightyear and kind of see an origin story. Like, it, like it's not going to be so much about a toy. It'll actually be about Buzz Lightyear and Star Command. And right. So it'll be like an animated sci-fi family-friendly film. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, I know my kids are really excited for it, too. So that definitely had to make my list. Um, when we went to see the new Spider-Man, they actually had a trailer for it. And uh, me and Ian seen it, and that's when I got the most excited for it. So definitely uh, check out the trailer for that, you guys. And that's supposed to come out around June 17th, I believe, is what I have wrote down here. So um, That's another thing that we should probably address is the fact that, like, I went through here and I tried to pick out movies that actually had dates, although there are movies that are probably coming out this year, but they really couldn't establish dates yet. Yeah, I have some games um, and stuff like that. A too. lot of it has to do with... Um, you know, COVID like that's impacting release dates on movies and actually literally some of these films are even doing reshoots and stuff like I would have, um, one movie that I'm definitely looking forward to coming out, but it didn't quite make the list for me is like the, the Dr. Strange movie, the right. Dr. Strange universe of madness. Um, they literally just wrapped reshoots like in the last few weeks of that, that, that they went and added some more scenes. Um, so the and Sam Raimi's directed that too. So the guy who did the first three Spider Man movies and the Evil Dead franchise. So that and Dark Man, so that should be pretty interesting. Um but uh the my. next one I have on my list is the Northmen. So this gets back into my director's talk. Uh it's Robert Eggers. Um there's already trailers out for this and I think it actually comes out oh, it's April, um, is what I have here. I thought it was March, but um, Robert Eggers. Uh, it's got um, Alexander Skarsgård um, from True Blood. He was in the Straw Dogs remake. Uh, he was in um, that failed Duncan Jones mute movie as well. Uh, he's been in some other things that I'm probably overlooking, but those are the, the main things that I've um, seen him in. It's at Sel- Stellan Skarsgård's son. Um Anna Taylor Joy's in it, as well as Willem Dafoe, uh, Bjork, uh, and Nicole Kidman. What a, so, what a cast! Um, kind of it, the idea is it's kind of like a it's a Nordic folk tale, if you will, of a uh, young print. Oh, and I forgot Ethan Hawke is in it as well. Ethan Hawke's in yeah. it. Yeah, I did Ethan not Hawk even know is that. Playing his He's, father. This is on my list. Slim, too, so. <laughs> so, but yeah, um, the Northman. I'm really, really looking forward. Robert Eggers did The Witch and also did The Lighthouse. Two of my Again, probably certainly in my top twenty favorite movies that have come out in the last twelve years. Um, both of them, um, I expect nothing but greatness um, coming forward with this one. This has just got some really cool, different approaches to film too. I think there's some like black and white cuts mixed in, right? Um, with really just wild composition in the film and um, and freaking 
Alexander Skarsgård's absolutely shredded. Looks like a damn monster in it. He does look incredible. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so what do you got next on your list? Well, I think, so we shared the Batman and the Northman. Mm-hmm. And then I did Jackass Forever, Lightyear, and Spider-Man. Okay. So I think so I'm fived out I, uh, you on your I last had, one. I did have Spider-Man. I did like some, um, you know, uh, ones that I wasn't real sure on the date. Although I think they are advertising a July date for Across the Spider-Verse now. So I did kind of some honorable mentions. But my fifth one that I have to say is Disappointment Boulevard. Uh, that's the new Ari Aster movie. Again, my directors I talked about earlier. But Joaquin Phoenix and Meryl Streep are starring in this. Oh, my God. Yeah. And I know there's another female actress of uh, prominence involved. But I, for right now, I, I cannot remember who the hell is involved in it. But, yeah. So Joaquin Phoenix, in my opinion, the best actor that there is uh, walking um, somebody's green earth right now. Yeah. Um, sure. Very talented individual. He's just insane. Anything that he does, he obviously won an Oscar for Joker. Um, he's got a movie out right now. Come on, come on that. I want to see. Have not Looks seen good. it. Yeah. Um, it's from the guy who did beginners, which I loved that movie. Um, yeah. So Joaquin Phoenix, one of my favorite directors right now. And my, probably my favorite actor. And who I think is the greatest actress of all time, Meryl Streep. I mean, what's not to like? What's not to be anticipated? Classic, right? Um, I'm also really looking forward to, again, not my top five, but the Black Panther movie. Where are they going with that? Chadwick Boseman died, right? Uh, unfortunately, and untimely. Do you think they'll recast? I don't think so. I think that his sister's taking the mantle over. Quite frankly, yeah. I think this is a cog to. They got this whole phase four thing going on with Marvel right now. They're kind of, you know, circling the wagons after the events in Infinity War and Endgame right. and Tony Stark dead and Captain America, I guess, is an old man. If he didn't die himself, you know, Black Widow died. Right. You know, so it's not giving away any trade secrets here. I think everybody knows at this point, regardless of whether or not you want to. <laughs> <what took place. laughs> yeah, I mean, it's been so long. I mean, yeah. And um, so it's hard. I'll be curious to see if nothing else where they go with it. Um, but right now that's tracking for November. But uh, the young lady who played his sister, I forget her the actress's name now. She actually broke her arm or something, suffered some type of injury on the set, and they had to uh, postpone filming. Oh no! So I think that that like November, yeah, they're looking they're looking to shoot for I think right now Thanksgiving. But I I doubt that they make it. I, I wouldn't be shocked if it doesn't go spring of next year. And then Killers of Flower Moon, new Martin Scorsese movie. Um, Everything he puts out is gold. So. Leonardo DiCaprio and De Niro are the two leads. So I mean, what's going to go wrong? Yeah, should you be know? fantastic though. <laughs> and um, I believe it, the premise of that is has to do with I can't remember the exact years, but it's it's actually based on you know uh, nonfiction bi- biographical events, if you will. Of uh, in, uh, it's I know it's investigators involved with. Native American reservations, um, you know, indigenous people of North America. Well, expect them to take it to the imposing, extreme. Yeah, imposing in on those lands given to them. Right. Um, and reserves um, in that regard. So um, I believe that that's kind of the big deal there. Hmm. Uh, so let's let's move on over to, I. we got TV series as well that yeah. we we're going to talk about. Yeah, we we'll uh, do that one next. What or? did you have? What, for series? Yeah, TV series, the first one that was on my list. And like I said, guys, none of this is in particular order. Um, I'm excited for every single one of these. So I really couldn't put a one, two, three, four, five on any of these. Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> but, but the first one on my list is definitely going to be the the rings of, the Ring of Power, the yeah. Lord of the Rings series yeah. that's coming out on Amazon. Yeah. Um, what's really cool about this, I didn't list all the cast members because there are so many characters in Lord of the Rings. I think they're kind of, and I could be wrong, but... Um, the people that are actually casted in this is relatively like no name. Right. Folks, yeah. So. The new like main characters will be no name, like yeah. newer actors yeah. and actresses, you know, it's not going to be the ones that you're familiar but, with. But well, movies. from what I've read and now, I don't know. And I've only seen, you know, the, the 30 second clip that everybody Teaser. else has seen online. Yeah. Right. But, um, they are saying that there will be returning cast members from the original films. Oh, really? That will, but the thing mm-hmm. that's hard for me to fathom with that is I also read that this is going to take part a thousand years before The Hobbit. That I'm not sure about. Um, I'm it's not, a predate of The Hobbit from what I've read. It could be. Uh, 
I honestly just was aware that they were doing it and I haven't read too much about it. I know the teaser came out the other day and it makes me sound like a bad fan because I've seen all the other movies and I enjoyed them. Right. But it's it's Amazon's taking it over. They're doing yeah. it as a series. I'm sure that probably that story is handled better, um, you know, in a TV series format, if you will. They can flush it out a little bit better because that was kind of the big criticisms of the movies, right? Was they try to like push too much of the books into one movie. Well, I mean, and that's traditionally Tolkien anyway. Like, if you've ever read any of Tolkien's books, man, it takes, like, 50 pages to describe one scene. So, Tolkien? Tolkien from South Park? Tolkien. Oh. Did I say it, Tolkien? <laughs> <laughs> J, J, Tolkien. Uh, I got my, the one, first one I had it on my list, again, not in any particular, was Righteous, Righteous Gemstones, but it's already started. Uh, I think it started a couple weeks ago. That. Oh, man. It's it's the best comedy series out right now. I don't think it's even close. Um, the premise of it is Danny McBride, uh, John Goodman, and Adam Devine, uh, well, and even uh, Walt Goggins are all part of a, a family of televangelists, essentially kind of like a Jerry Falwell type, uh, Falwell family type, and it's just the ridiculous antics and stories behind that. Um, this new season in particular had added Eric Andre uh, and Jason Schwartzman as well as uh, Eric Roberts. Um, so there's some new cast members in this season. And it is so it's already a few episodes in. And again, I, I said we kind of prepared these materials a few weeks back. So now that we're a few episodes in, I, I can just confidently say that, yeah, you know, sometimes you worry about from season to season things dropping off. But same gang of characters that are involved in foot fist way and uh vice principals and kenny powers you know it's it's jody hill it's it's um david gordon green same group of people danny mcbride writing directing this stuff so it's the same type of of humor you're really gonna enjoy it what's the next one you got on your list josh um of course ahsoka so Star Wars yes, is going to yes. dominate a lot of my list. <laughs> yeah, and I could have. Yeah, I definitely could have put that one on mine, but I tried to avoid it because I was pretty confident you'd have it on yours. Yeah, Ahsoka. Okay, so Ahsoka Tanu. Um, if you guys are into the Star Wars or, or follow Star Wars, she's like uh, probably my second favorite character out of Star Wars, and she will be getting her own spinoff series after the events of the Mandalorian. And it, she, uh, the the actress will be Rosario Dawson. She will return as Ahsoka. So I'm pretty excited about that. One of my all-time celebrity crushes. Oh, dude. Rosario Dawson. Even as Ahsoka. Like, when I yeah. seen her on screen as Ahsoka, I was like, oh, girl. She but looks anyway. incredible. <laughs> but anyway, so um, the premise of that, well, if you guys have ever watched Rebels or The Clone Wars and followed Ahsoka's life, um, it's kind of going to dive into her hunt for Grand, Grand Admiral Thrawn, which is going to be played by Lars Mikkelsen, which if you don't know who that is, it's Matt Mikkelsen's brother. Yeah. He's been in uh, The Witcher. Not Mads Mikkelsen, but Lars Mikkelsen. He plays right. a character in The Witcher. Um, uh, Mads is pretty famous from like movies like 007. Um, right. He was he played Hannibal in the TV series. So um, and he was in Rogue One. Yeah, in Rogue One, he played um, the doctor that developed the Death Star. Yeah, Jin's Jin's father. I, God, he's Jin Jern Urso. Yeah. Yeah. I can't, Galen Urso is his name. Yeah. He played Galen Urso. So it's excited. I'm excited to to actually see what plays out with that. You know, with the with her role as far as in Mandalorian helping Grogu find his way and right. kind of getting introduced into the Mandalorian. Um, and maybe now, you know, we might even see her come as far as to Boba Fett. But the, the right. ultimate thing for me is my favorite character will return, which is Darth Vader or Anakin Skywalker and um, returning is Hayden Christensen to play him. Yeah. And he will be also in the Obi-Wan series, which we'll get to right. that in a minute. Right. But, um, so it's going to be really exciting. He's, um, he's supposed to be in the Ahsoka series too? Yes. He, oh, I didn't know. he will be appearing as Vader and and, oh. and Anakin in the Ahsoka oh, yeah. series, from what I've read online. Um, well, I guess they would have to do some callbacks, right? Because Ahsoka was under his guise back in the Clone Wars. Well, right? she was his Padawan, right, really. Right, right. He was never granted the rank of Master, but he was right. allowed to trade a Padawan. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so... I, if I you, guess that makes sense. I don't know why I didn't really put that together. Yeah. So it'll be exciting to... And, actually, I think Rosario Dawson and Hayden Christensen have some chemistry together. I think they were in a film together. I, I want to say... Um, let me look this up real quick. That, that one, I don't recall off the top Dawson. of my head. But, um, yeah, anyway, yes, just to see... Hayden Christensen come back into the Star Wars and into the Star Wars universe and be embraced and, you know, 
I really liked the guy that played Vader in Rogue One, but it'll be nice to see Hayden Christensen right. reprise the role, right. you know. So I, that's that's I'm so excited for that series. I, I think it's it's definitely going to bring even more hype to the Star Wars franchise and open up a lot more opportunities. Well, let's just stay on the Star Wars topic. I know we both have Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan, Kenobi baby. For season one, that's for sure coming out this year. Looking forward to that. Of course, the cast characters are back. Uh, Ewan McGregor is actually one of my favorite actors as well. Absolutely. Um, you know, Doctor Sleep, I feel like, is a extremely great movie, and he honestly should have gotten some more praise for his role in that and his acting in that movie. Um, which was essentially a sequel to The Shining um, and done by Mac Flanagan, who does all the Haunting on Hill House stuff and Midnight Mass and so on and so forth. Um, but uh, back to Obi-Wan specifically, um, and then, you know, Hayden Christensen returning. Um, I know that they have sev- I think there's mentions of Joel Egerton coming back as well because oh, he wow. plays like uh, the uncle that raised Anakin. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know there's some other folks, uh, other celebrities that I'm probably forgetting at the moment, but, uh, of course we get the, to me, Obi-Wan is one of those characters, much like a Boba Fett that was in the original movies, um, that did not quite get, but the, they ended up doing the pre, the prequels in the nineties, mind you. So he did get a lot of screen time with that. However, he just did not get his day in the sun. He was an awesome character. People gravitated toward him. People liked him in the original trilogy. Right. But he dies kind of quickly, mm-hmm. if you will, and doesn't have actually a lot of screen time, per se. Right. Uh, whenever you look at the other cast of characters. So um, it's nice to see these people that, you know, you gravitated toward actually get fleshed out more. They get their day in the sun, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. And also with Obi-Wan, um, it ties into the original saga. You know, I mean, like, I know Boba Fett does, too. But, like, Ahsoka's a new character. Mando's a newer character. You know what I mean? It's it's cool to see Star Wars trying to tie itself back to the original stuff. You know what I mean? And kind of fill some of those plot holes and trying to um, elaborate and introduce us to stuff that we may not know to make things, you know what I mean, clearer, more clearer in the story. So I'm excited for it. I think it's going to be awesome for Star Wars. Um, keep it down to the nerd path of things. Um, I just want to briefly mention Mandalorian three is not even actually filming yet. I don't believe so. I don't think it's going to meet the timetable to come out this year. It'll probably be next year. I would think. Well, and there's and, speculation and that there either. may only be one more season of Mandalorian. I could see that. And then they've alluded to the, well, I haven't watched the newest episode of, um, Boba Fett that came out last night, but last week, um, did kind of the famous Mandalorian whistle at the end of it when they talked about recruiting help. So there's allusions to Mandalorian coming back into the Boba Fett series specifically as well. Well, I watched Held it, and out. I won't ruin it for you, but you're in for a real treat. I'll tell you that. All right. <laughs> uh, so uh, I, 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 I've left it off my list with intent because I'm very confident it's not going to come out this year. But... I do have Moon Knight on my list, and that's back to Oscar Isaac. We talked about him earlier. Yeah. Um, he's playing the title character. Um, Moon Knight is a very interesting Marvel. Uh, to call him a hero isn't exactly correct, although he, I guess, is, is more of a vigilante, an anti-hero, if you will. Um, he, you know, he's essentially he's an, uh, a crazy guy with m- multiple personalities, illusions of grandeur, this, that, the other thing, um, comes upon a, an ancient Egyptian artifact and it gives him powers. So it's got kind of this, uh, where Marvel's kind of taking its cinematic universe with this and, and Wanda and Dr. Strange. And even in the last Spider-Man movie, magic is starting to play a larger role, right. uh, going forward, um, with the Marvel uh, cinematic universe. So, um, it not only does it have Oscar Isaac in it, Ethan Hawke is in this as well. Um, he kind of plays, I guess, the primary uh, antagonist, if you will, uh, to him, a, a rival. Uh, I think they term him as an artifact collector or something of that effect. So, you know, Oscar Isaac falls on a guy with this dissociative disorder, ends up now with a superhero power and moniker. So everybody writes him off when he tells folks about or 
I'm assuming this is where the show's going. All I've seen is the trailer and I've read some of the comics and have some of the limited runs, but, um, Moon Knight is one of those characters, much like a century in Marvel comics that is got a lot of potential. They haven't done enough with, um, they've had a few runs here and there. They've been a part of teams, but they're really somebody that they can do something with and, 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 and really, uh, the TV treatment of it is very interesting um, that they're approaching it in, the, in that way. What else you got on your list, Josh? I'm uh, going to keep it Star Wars, and I'm going to go with Andor. Okay, yeah, I, I totally forgot about that one. <laughs> Diego Luna is returning as Cassian Andor, or Captain Cassian Andor. Um, Alan Tudyk, I think I'm saying that yeah, right? He's yeah. actually going to return as He's K2SO, great. which those two together in Rogue One were like yeah. one of my favorite combinations. Absolutely. Like that whole film was fantastic, and it's like probably my top three Star Wars films, but like the combination of uh, Cassian Andor and, you know, uh, K2SO and like that whole dynamic with Jen and the other two, I just love that. So I feel like if they can return to that kind of theme with Rogue One and kind of um, play off that I think it'll be um, fantastic it actually takes place place five years before Rogue One so it's going to be all the events leading up to him nice. being involved in that situation yeah. with Jim. Um, I knew it was a prequel I wasn't exactly sure of the timeline right because I mean he does die at the right, end of Rogue right. One so um yeah Spoiler. It's, yeah yeah if you have never seen <laughs> yeah. it that's what happens but uh but we were just talking about this before we got on uh started recording the uh, Rogue One's like my favorite, my well, second or third favorite yeah. uh, Star Wars movie. For ever. sure. So uh, I I think it's you know, and it's it's odd in the sense that it doesn't have like the storybook happy ending. That I mean, there's cliffhangers in the series, right. if you will, and the anthology, if you will. Um, but um, it it's definitely got a very gloomy ending. Well, I think the intention was to like introduce some characters. Because it was a build up to the original film, like, right? That Rogue One was, and it was a way to introduce characters without having to elaborate what happened to them later on. But really, the 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 premise of it was because you know whenever the end of that, Layla ends up with the plans to the Death Star. Right. That's ultimately the goal. That's right. How, they're just bridging a gap. They're explaining how Layla got those. Right. Right. Yeah. And that was their mission: is that Jen Erso's father created the Death Star, the Mads Michelson character. Right. They got the plans. They sent it to you know the rebellion, and then they found the weakness and right. destroyed the Death Star. Right. So, but it'll be cool just to see like um, he was an intelligence officer, an undercover intelligence officer. So I think it'll be like a really cool tone for the for the film, you know, him kind of sneaking around and gathering right. an intelligence and meeting a bunch of sly characters and stuff. I think it'll be a really cool experience. And like I said, it just expands the star Wars universe. And I, I think these guys are doing a fantastic job. I think yeah. Favreau and, uh, what's his name? The guy from Clone Wars that's been helping them. Right. Um, I can't uh, Dave, isn't it Filoni. Dave, Dave Filoni. Filoni. Yeah. They've been doing fantastic. I think Kathleen, Amishan, or Kathleen, what's her name? I'm so bad with names. Um, anyway, the, the lady that, Runs. I thought it was Kathleen Kennedy. But Kathleen yeah. Kennedy. That is what it is. Yeah. I think she should just give the keys of the castle to those two guys and just let them have creative free will yeah. <laughs> because they are killing it as far as. And the Robert Star Wars Rodriguez has been a lot involved as well, especially right. Bryce Dallas Howard, and um, a, and he was involved with um, the Mandalorian. Yeah. Um. Actually, Bryce Dallas How- Howard uh, directed, directed last night's episode. Oh, really? Yeah. I know she also did for the Mandalorian. So as well. you, you, I think you'll like it a lot. Nice. So. And her father, of course, did the Han Solo movie. Yep, which was fantastic. I don't. I think it's definitely underrated. It's not like in my top five, but it. No. I thought it was an okay film. It was all right. <laughs> Donald Glover was the best part. Oh of yeah, it. yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, so another one, I guess, in, our, in, in my nerddom here is Sandman. Oh. Sandman is based off of uh, the comic, if you will, um, and it's it's. Another one that's rooted in mythos, magic, mystique, goth kind of approach. Um, and it deals with characters like death and so on and so forth. Um, the comics, I absolutely love. Um, Constantine's involved in the main story arc as well. Really? Uh, yeah. I oh, mean, wow. it's it's really, it's excellent. Neil Gaiman, um, it's a, a creation of his. Um, under uh, you know the DC helm, but I, I think it was actually on um, uh, Variant Comics or no, not Variant. Excuse me, Vertigo. Um, 
whenever the original series came out. And then they actually just came back like five ish years ago with another the Sandman interlude. I collected those, but I haven't read them all yet. Uh, so I have them, so I need to get caught up on that. But Sandman, in my opinion, actually, it, it's got a cult following, but I also feel like it's a um, comic that doesn't get enough appreciation, love, or attention. Right. Um, I really love it. Um, cool. And I'm it, it's, that. it's interesting, the folks that are involved um, with it. Um, but uh, I'm just going to volley over to you. You got another one on your list to knock out? Um, I or think did that, we have a bunch of bleed over? I'm, I'm, yeah, I think so. I, I think I'm, uh, I'm on to games now on my list. So the only other one I had was <laughs> Peaky Blinders. Um, Pe- Peaky Blinders Season 6. This is the last season. Oh, I did have another one um, that I skipped. But go ahead. Um, but <laughs> the Peaky Blinders, if you haven't watched it. So I kind of, I, I watched Bordock Walk Empire when it first came out. Yeah, uh, but then I fell off of it, so I had to go back and start it all over. Again. That was a big series for me, uh, and I loved it. Yeah, and it I, I love. I'm just kind of like fascinated with the whole up and coming mob crime world of the you know in the prohibition area and all that stuff. Right, mobsters, so on and so forth. That that was it was a fictional series, but it had a lot of actual characters and people in it. Right. Um, from history, you know, your Al Capones, if you will. Well, I think the main character, um, Nucky Tom, or Nucky Thompson is yeah. actually based off a real alderman in, yeah, in New Jersey it, yeah, named yeah. Enoch Johnson, right? Yes. And they changed his yes, name because yes. of legal issues. Right, right. And he had to also kind of be a blend of characters in in that right. in that time. So he actually, you know, depicted things that the, the other one didn't necessarily do. But there was a lot of carryover. Right. And he right. was the yeah the inspiration for that character. Um, but Lucky Luciano, oh yeah, was in. I mean, oh, he was the one kid of my that played Lucky, was he was fantastic. excellent. I mean, you'd love to hate him, right? 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 So, um, but that was really a good series. It kind of fell off with the last two seasons, in my opinion. But in that same vein, that got us inspired to. And again, I watched the Peaky Blinders um, pilot two different occasions. Never kept watching it. I was like, let's you know, let's buckle down. And I heard, heard good things about it. And uh, it's great. It's a great series. Um, you know, they've got their whole universe going. But the Peaky Blinders gang essentially is a, a gang in, in Great Britain. Um, they act, and they are based on a real gang. The real gang did not rise to the prominence that this gang has, but they're rooted in British, in British intelligence. Um, they're involved in international affairs. Oh, like, dang. This, I need to dive into is, Peaky Blinders. This is really... Isn't, aren't they called Peaky Blinders because of their hats? Well, that's their calling card is their hats. They hide razor blades in the bill of their hats. Okay. And then they take them off and slap them at the people okay. Okay. with them. So I that's thought kind I had of heard a that. Weapon. But they've gotten kind of like past that. Like mm-hmm. they've risen the ranks in the uh, crime and uh, organized crime world, if you will. Right. And they're like in bed. They're with established. Like, and they're basically a terrorist. Like <laughs> the best way to put it is they're basically a terrorist organization Employed by Winston Churchill himself, essentially. Wow. Yeah, I need to dive into this. So it's it's pretty crazy. Uh, now, the, again, the real Peaky Blinders did not. They, I think, they had only lasted as a gang maybe like four years. Oh, they wow. were snuffed out pretty quickly. They weren't nearly. But they like having interactions and interfacing with the IRA and all this other like you know oh, historical so it, shit. Right, so it plays into actual so events it and actually stuff. kind of there's some layover with timelines and stuff with the stuff that happened in um, Boardwalk Empire, of course, because it's all hmm. in the same the time period. Yeah. So, um, so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, so let's move on to the. Oh, well, you said you missed. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah I did miss one. Um, House of Dragons. Oh, that's right. The prequel yeah. for uh, Game of Thrones. Yeah, I, I did skip over that one. Yeah, yeah House of Dragons. Um, Matthew s- Smith is in that. There has not been a solid release date yet for this. Um, I did get a message from a friend earlier that said it could be as er- early as April. Like, apparently that leaked on IB or ID. What is it? I- IMDB. Yeah, it leaked yeah. on that. Um, so I don't know if there's any like validity to that claim. So I'm not like going to go out and say that's when it's going to come, but it is supposed to come out in some time in 22. And again, the pandemic has had an effect on filming because they film all over the world for, yeah, for all the game of Thrones series, they film all over the world and they're doing the same with this. Um, but actually this is going to take, uh, take part 300 years before game of Thrones. So it's going to be focused on the Targaryens and their battle for power. So the Targaryens were the original, 
um, I guess, powerhouse in Westeros before Robert's Rebellion and the events of Game of Thrones. So this is going to kind of play into that and show how a specific, there was several different Targaryen families and how a specific Targaryen family fell into power. Um, so you got to imagine in this time they had dragons, like they're everywhere, right. all of them right. had dragons. So it's going to be a lot of civil war, battle. Um, so I'm kind of excited to see that and see how That's, they play off the story and how they spin it off to Game of Thrones. What that universe is set in is another time period. I mean, obviously that's fictional work, but it's set kind of medieval times. If right. you will, that I'm, I personally am very fascinated with. Oh as yeah, well. for sure. And yeah, um, I think a lot of it's going to play off the book, The Dance of Dragons. So if anybody's read any of Martin's stuff, The Dance of Dragons is supposedly going to be the biggest part of the House of Dragons. So I think it should be fantastic. It looks good. Um, yeah, again, with the cast, a lot of no names and stuff. Like there might be some. Like, you know, some prominent, like, European actors and stuff well, like that. Well, uh, Matt Smith is in it. He's, he plays one of the Targaryens, which he's the doctor um, in Doctor Who. Oh, okay. Um, after David Tennant, and he did an excellent job. Him and Tennant are my favorite all time. Um, and then he actually, as far as recent movies, he was in just the last Edgar Wright movie, The Last Night in Soho. Huh. Um which he did a fine job in that. He just like he played like a bad guy, so I like did not did not want to see him as such. Mm-hmm. So I was like not about that in that regard. So um, yeah, it's hard to for some. Yeah. It's hard to see people that you like really love like really enduring people to play like bad people sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Um, one show I have to mention that I am definitely looking forward though to is The Last of Us, the depiction from the game. Oh yeah, yeah, and yeah that, for sure. And that actually has the guy that's playing the uh, Mandalorian. Um, is, Pedro Pascal. Is, yeah, Pedro Pascal is, is playing Jody, the, the title character. Wow. And then the... Um, I didn't the, even know this was happening. The little girl from Game of Thrones that was a queen, she came over her uh, estate. She was like a part of the North with the Starks. Oh, wow. Uh, um, I forget her name, but she's playing the the young girl from the series as well. Okay. So they're the two main characters. Was the, Ellen Page the voice actress for, uh, she, for the I original think, character? I think she did. Oh, well, her, her name is not Ellen Page. I, Elliot I, Page. Elliot Page, I apologize. Yeah. yeah His name. It's still hard to get used to. I know. To. Well, she, 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 or he was Elliot, or you know what I mean. Right, right. <laughs> I hear you. Um. So let's get into the games. What do you got on your list? Um, let's see. I think the first one I'm going to go with is Starfield. It's like um, it's an action RPG, but it's set in space. It's going to um, it, it looks like to me, it's like a new like a new frontier type space game, like where you're establishing yourself in, in this new unknown world in space. Um, it looks really cool. Um it's supposed to be in a next gen experience, set in an entirely new space space theme world. It's being uh, worked out by. It's kind of like No Man's Sky, or. Um, I think mostly it's. Have you played? Um, yeah, kind of like No Man's Sky, like yeah. more like RPG ish though, like story involved. I got you. More like um, not so open Outer world. Worlds. Okay. You played that. No. And it's made by the same people that did um, like Fallout and stuff like that. I got you. So, yeah, um, but like well, more of a cool. graphical experience than yeah. than like a Fallout type let game. Me, let me just say, I'm probably not the best person to talk about what games are coming out because I hardly have time to play them anymore. It's My life has changed drastically oh, since right, having kids right. and uh, work and what have you. So I, even though I've made a list, I'm not I like so much has happened in the last 10 years with games. Like I'm not even sure like who even makes some of these games anymore. Right. I just know, like, I saw, like, a lot of the lists that were coming out, like, you know, 20 most anticipated games of the year or whatever. Right. You know, that type of stuff I saw kind of coming out at the end of last year. So I kind of just made some tabs of things that were coming out that intrigued me personally. Yeah. Um, the, um, that has a November 11th release, which, again, is, right. you know. Contingent on yeah. a lot of things right now. And, uh, again, uh, Bethesda is working on that, which... Yeah, Bethesda rules. I do like Bethesda. And, you know, like, a lot of people have been like, oh, but they've been acquired by Microsoft. But I think that that gives them more resources to do even more, in right. my opinion. So, that it's supposed to be an outstanding game. Um, they announced it at the was it E3 or whatever they played the trailer and it looks fantastic. So definitely check that out guys. It's on YouTube. You can see all the cinematics and find out more about it, but it looks fantastic. Uh, Well, the first one I have on my list is Gotham Knights. Um, So Gotham Knights is a team of folks in the DC Batman universe specifically 
Um, you know, if you like the Arkham games and that sort of stuff, you're probably familiar with them at it's least. Like one of my favorite art the comics and games. Yeah. <laughs> so in this one, you can I believe there's different points of the mission you can perhaps even trade out with characters. I'm not real sure quite yet, but I know you have the ability to. And this cast of characters, at least the core folks, is Nightwing, Red Hood, Robin, and Batgirl. Oh wow! Um, so you get to either play as one of them the entire time or switch between characters. I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of what the premise is there. Yeah. Um, they always do something neat with those games. So I'm, I'm curious to see where they go with it. It definitely spiked my interest. What else you got on your list? Um, I have Pokemon legends Arceus, which is a new switch games. It's getting ready ready to come out. Actually, I think it releases on the 28th and today's the 27th. So that's tomorrow. Like I said, I made this list like, uh, two weeks ago though. (laughs) But yeah, um, Pokemon legends Arceus is going to be a new open world action adventure RPG. Um, it's obviously Pokemon. Um, the style and the graphic style is very, very similar to Zelda breath of the wild. So like the environment and like the interactions and stuff and how the world is built in breath of the wild, it'll be very similar. Um, one thing that I'm really excited for is the open world catch system. Um, so basically like you will just stumble upon Pokemon and like it won't go into a cutscene like it used to on, on like Game Boy and you have to like weaken the Pokemon. It'll be like a wild Pokemon. He'll be in his element and you'll have to figure out how to catch him. You know what I mean? So it's going to add a whole new aspect to Pokemon. Yeah, a new layer of strategy to the game. Right, right. It's going to make it like more like a realism feel than, you know, like an arcade game feel. So, um, it it looks fantastic. Uh, comes out tomorrow. It will only be on the Switch on which, you know, Pokemon Nintendo. Unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, Nintendo has a death hold on that whole franchise. So, um, but yeah, definitely check that game out. It looks so good. Uh, the one I have on my list next is Nightingale. Um, yes. From what I could see of it, it looked like it had kind of like Lovecraftian vibes. Uh, right. Like uh, gaslight lamps coming up on ship wreckage. Right. So, like, I'm pretty much always attracted to, like, comic book games post-apocalyptic, some sports games, and then horror games. That's usually, you know, my wheelhouse. Right. Um, so, uh, yeah, definitely going to, I'm sure, love this game. The aesthetics look crazy. Um, I'm sure it's littered with jump scares and what have you in it. So, <laughs> like, All the it just... Uh, sometimes you, the, those things, those games don't live up to the hype or the, t- like, kind of at least what i hear i have cyberpunk i still haven't played it yet but cyberpunk was one of those games that everybody was just raving about it's good and it kind of it fell flat on its face at least initially because it they they released the game too too soon soon. absolutely yeah it had way too many issues had way too many flaws um so what else you got on your list josh um well um to keep up with the nintendo switch uh, vibe uh, i'm gonna go with zelda breath of the wild too which was just announced. Um, there was a lot of speculation if it would even come out this year. Um, it, it is supposed to be a 2022 release, but again, that that might change. Um, it's been really hush hush. They haven't really, they haven't really um, come out and said what specifically, like I guess the main story is, or like you know what, like what the objective link is, what objective link is going to have in this one. Um, the only thing that I could find was that this one will be the first one that will fil- feature like multiple villains that are trying you know what i mean like there won't be one person that's trying to stop link this will be like a group of different villains so it's kind of going to take you back to the majora's mass feel of like nintendo 64 um same beautiful world building um yeah and they said it's going to be even more open world which is kind of hard for me to fathom because that game is gigantic in itself for a switch game so i don't know how you could get more open world than that but yeah if they can like i'm all about that like world detail is huge to me in video games oh yeah absolutely so i'm it's a maker or breaker and uh, obviously that is a switch exclusive but i'm excited to learn more about that as they release more but like i said it's been pretty hush hush so far it's just kind of got an out so uh, the next one I have on my list is Midnight Sun. So this is back into the superhero realm. We're jumping to Marvel now this time. Um, so Midnight Suns is kind of one of those experimental Marvel super teams that they did, honestly, just to sell comics. Um, I don't remember what year. I want to say 90s, perhaps it was 80s that they, they kind of first. But they, they never had a huge prominent run uh, from my recollection. But uh there's various incarnations of the team. Uh, this game in particular, my understanding and what I looked at 
it kind of gave me a similar feel to the new um, Guardians of the Galaxy game. Um, but you, you, it appears that you get to be one of the following people, let's put it that way. Ghost Rider, Wolverine, Iron Man, Blade, Doctor Strange, Captain America, just to name a few to start. Holy so moly. any of those people would be fantastic to to do through a game through. And I'm not sure that there's ever been a Ghost Rider game other than perhaps the movie game, which I'm sure is trash and they normally are. <laughs> I don't think I ever played um, it. <laughs> so like this is a pretty cool opportunity to play Ghost Rider. And there is a Wolverine game coming out um, by the people that have done the first two Spider-Man games for Sony. Um, and they're also doing a Venom. Um, so, but those, I, I don't believe are coming out this year for sure, right. but they have started developing them. So I'm really excited to play what their take is on Wolverine whenever it comes as well. They, they kind of already teased, uh, some of the graphics, like the first one that they teased was like him sitting at a bar, like barrel chested with, uh, the, for the, wife back, with the wife beater on. Yeah. <laughs> and he's got like, kind of like the old Western hat on. Um, so yeah, that's, they're already getting the aesthetic right there. So, but anywho, uh, Marvel's Midnight Suns, check it out. I, I think it's going to be at least uh, worth, uh, an initial gameplay. All right. Next on my list. Um, I'm going to keep, I'm going to do the space thing again. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of a uh, Kerbal space program, but that was a game that was released yeah. a few years back. Um, it's, um, a space program simulator basically. So like, um, nice. The new one is going to be called Kerbal Space Program 2, and it's going to be a continuation of the first game. It's going to be a space program simulator. What's cool about this game is it actually has real physics. So what it does is it takes the the dimensions of our solar system, our planets, um, to scale. and to, and scales it down, but adds real physics and gives you the equipment to explore space. You just have to figure out how to build it and how to do it. So that so basically they give you like the equipment to build rockets and take your Kerbals, which are basically like the little humans, yeah. off of Kerbin, which is Earth, and explore other planets. And they have objectives cool. and missions and stuff. Um, I spent like over a hundred hours on the first game when it came out, so I'm just like so excited to get on there and see what I can do. You know, I love building rockets and stuff, so I think this game should be really fun. And what's cool about the um, this this new KSP is that I think it's going to release on everything. Like as far as I've yeah, I've multi-platform. Read, yeah, it'll be multi-platform. You'll be it, um, the, the original was only on PC, so it'll be cool to see this branch out into consoles and everything else. So, and um, again, the release date is 2022. They haven't gave a specific hard date. They're still in development of it, um, but it looks awesome. I'm, I'm excited for it. Uh, I <laughs> this one's going to be funny and out of left field. Uh, Stray. Have you seen this? No, I have not. Stray. Uh, it's it's short, sweet, and to the point. You play uh, as a stray cat wandering the city. <laughs> so I was uh, immediately intrigued by the concept. And oh, it yeah. sounds like a very interesting time. And the, the art aesthetic is uh, appeals to me as well. Kind of reminds me of like um, Goat Simulator. Me and yeah. my kids used to play Goat Simulator. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, that sounds interesting. What you got next? Um, last but not least, um, Elden Ring. I know there's been a lot of buzz in the gaming world about Elden Ring, and a lot of people are really excited for it. Um, it did get pushed back. Um, they're talking about a February 25th release. Um, that's subject to change, <laughs> like everything else. Um, what's the most exciting thing about this game for me is uh, the writers collabed with George R. R. Martin during writing. Um, he came up with the base material for the game setting and for the character development. So if you really enjoyed like Game of Thrones or any, you know, any of his writings or anything, this game may be for you. It's an action RPG um, and it's supposedly supposed to be like some of the best storytelling in gaming so far. Um, And they kind of have some pretty neat, cool approaches to the game. Like I was reading and discussing with another friend the other day. They were like the first gaming game development company to develop a a less stress induced game without reducing difficulty right so i think that's kind of a cool aspect like to make games enjoyable without reducing the difficulty yeah like uh pam and i were talking discussing that game the other night and i was just like how is this even possible though like your brain just can't even wrap your mind around the possibility of that because like that's one thing that i like sometimes have a hard time coping with with playing games if i start getting stressed out right that's a big issue with the industry now is you know like everything's so competitive as far as gaming that it's just it's not a pleasant experience it's more of like a it's work you know what i mean like 
with these shooters and competitive gaming has changed the aspect of gaming. Gaming Games have gotten difficult to appease people that like difficult games, but there's casual gamers that are like, holy crap, man, I'm yeah. overwhelmed. You like, know yeah, I mean? almost have a panic or anxiety episode of some sort right out the gate. Right, right. Uh, the next one I've got, and we'll get back into the space talk, uh, is the Callisto Protocol. Have you seen this? I have not seen this either. It is a space horror drama. Um, created by the creators of of Dead Space. Oh, so, well, Dead Space was fantastic. So. so yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. Again, what I've seen released of it looks absolutely phenomenal. Again, I'm just like starting to talk about it and getting chill bumps. Like, <laughs> I already can already for, see myself in front of the computer screen, dark room, right, and like constantly on out. the verge of like <laughs> pissing myself. <laughs> you know, yeah, for sure. So uh, some of my honorable mentions I wrote down: Justice League, or excuse me, uh, Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League. That looks fun. That almost made my list. Sometimes you know the gameplay doesn't actually actualize to you know the cinematic cuts that you see, right. Um, so like, I'm, I'm kind of apprehensive about that one, even though I've seen some game cuts, I'm still not quite sure about it. I feel like that one, I could be surprised in a bad way with it. Right. You It'd know? be a pleasant surprise. Um, but, uh, and then the day before is another one that really intrigues me. It's a post-apocalyptic game. It's zombie-esque survival game, uh, in the vein of the last of us, I think is kind of what they've kind of compared it to, but obviously doing their own thing there. So space and horror, man, it doesn't get much better than that. Absolutely. Evoke, evoke, um, real emotions, you know, and, and play on your fears and right. And that, and, and then they help create that environment. I don't know, like playing it. Like I love horror movies. They're probably like, if I was to have to say like one genre was my favorite, you know, consistently probably horror. Right. Um, but, um, again though it's because it kind of like creates a mood and an environment um like if you see a good horror movie or you play a good horror game there's little that compares to that experience right right um when it comes to cinema or gaming in my right. opinion yeah because it really, it really plays off your true you. emotions yeah, right absolutely yep um, so I think we've pretty much covered it on the gaming stuff. You, anything else that you wanted to hit? I didn't really have any honorable mentions. There, like I said, there's so much stuff that's coming. That and I'm, just... I'm sure there's stuff that we oh, missed. Dude, yeah. You know, so whenever we <laughs> get the episodes out, you get a chance to listen. Don't feel free to kind of s- circle back on the social media. Um, yeah, let us know what you perhaps think. Give us some feedback, and we probably missed some stuff. Maybe we can shout you out on the next episode and some of your recommendations and and gives us a chance to go and take a look at them because, you know, once again, I said life's busy. We probably overlooked something. Um, but again, this was kind of our own personal interest and take uh, on the gaming side of stuff. So Heck yeah. um, we're going to hit you guys with a quick break and then we're going to kind of uh, come back and then and, and talk about what kind of what the plans are uh, on the next episode. Stay cool. Welcome back. Uh, we just wanted to take an opportunity to thank you for sticking with us on this episode. So nice to be back. And we're happy to be back, happy to have an outlet, happy to have a platform to uh, mm-hmm. talk to everybody again. And if nothing else, just uh, two two brethren sitting down and Hell yeah. having a little communion. Yeah, just even that. I mean, that's huge for me. So I appreciate it either way. I'm glad to be back. Yeah, me too. And, um, you know, hopefully we've at least uh, baited the hook to bring you back into the fold here somewhat. Uh, I promise that things are going to develop out even more um, and we'll have some more entertaining stuff in store. So right now we're in the moment of uh, developing our own social medias uh, for the group. So it's ATI Pod. Uh, You'll be finding us there, and we'll have some more updates on the next episode with that in particular. Uh, For right now, uh, you can find me at Barry Insane on Instagram and on Twitter. I really don't do the Facebook thing. I'll probably get on there just to promote this in particular, drop this episode, make people aware of what we're doing here. Um, Josh, where can people find you at? You can find me on Instagram at underscore Joshua Welch, W-E-L-C-H, just like the grape juice. 
So, um, yeah, that's my private Instagram. But again, like Barrett said, we will be developing socials. And as soon as we get that figured out, we'll get that out to you guys. So once we have socials in order, uh, we'll put up uh, an email address, too, for you guys to send questions to the show about. Or even audio um, clips. I think that would be a good and, idea. And certainly audio clips. So uh, kind of a part of that idea, too. You know, we mentioned doing the tribute episode to Cato. I've already got some feelers out to some folks. Uh, if you're hearing this and perhaps I didn't reach out to you, it, perhaps it was an innocent overlook on my behalf. Uh, if you can prepare some type of material that you'd like to send us for right now, you can send it to our personal stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, we'll be happy to put out what our, our, our stuff is for the show email. Uh, we'll have a show Facebook fan page. We'll have a Twitter for you guys to send to as well as Instagram. Um, and then kind of what we have in store for next week, we kind of wanted to let you know, um, we're going to bless upon you all. I say next week. Let's let's say next, next episode. episode. <laughs> yeah, because of uh, the situation. Pending baby. Yeah, pending baby <laughs> situation. Um, so what the plan is, is we're going to do a, our um, This Week in Infamy, uh, our wild and obscure news stories for you all. Uh, kind of the premise is, is I've asked Josh to pick out the stories but not um you know let me know what they are in advance so i can react to them in real time and we'll we'll probably take turns switching back and forth on that yeah um but we'll start with josh kind of picking those out um (laughs) so it'll be relatively recent news but just like the most wild shit that you wouldn't expect like you know yeah um senile grandmother shits in ron church's communion bowl (laughs) you know that sort of thing so um Mm. And then we'll uh, we're gonna do state of sports at that time. Um, you know, maybe we can get this in right at Super Bowl time. But you know, there's a lot of things going on in sports. You know how COVID has impacted sports. Uh, the baseball lockout that's currently going on. Um, you know, just uh, a lot of that. You know, the the failed super teams of the NBA and, right. and yada yada. So the things that are going on at this time, kind of the teams that we follow, maybe. Um, and then we'll also talk about uh, perhaps, you know, like whatever current events, you know, I'm sure there'll be something that happens in this crazy world uh, that'll be worth talking about. And again, we'll be hitting you up with those social media updates for next time. So I want to thank everybody for uh, yeah, guys, coming on. Thank you so much. And uh, the ATI podcast, we are back in business and uh, we're going to play you out. Uh, with a little bit of enemy airship, good friends of the show. Uh, Zach, I love you, boo. I miss uh, you, Zach. And Logan and Mike, um, we love you guys. Love your music. Keep doing it. And you guys check them out. They are playing shows in St. Louis right now, even though it's kind of sketchy. But they play at credible places that enforce mask ma- mandates and and that sort of thing. So uh, keep everybody safe, but still everybody having a good time. So. Check out Enemy Airship. Um, they're everywhere. They're on Spotify, SoundCloud. Uh, they have Instagrams. Um, they're all on Instagram, I should say. Uh, they're on Facebook, so on and so forth. So, And a lot of their stuff's for free up on Bandcamp. So check out Enemy Airship. And until next time, guys, be safe. Shalom. Shalom.